we go. Bike's failing. Yeah, it's going bad. You can hear it. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be pulling that hard, really. Yeah, it's going on me. I can feel it going. It's not getting enough fuel by the feel of it. I'm conking out. I'm conking out. Yeah, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. Well, the Triumph tap kit, you get a tap fully assembled, uh, the spacer, that bit's on the tank first, and the two washers that go either end of this thing, and that on there, obviously, and a new internal gauze, which I don't think I need, but I use it anyway. So it's a nice kit. It uh, comes with the, the full, everything you need anyway. Still draining my tank. On the other fuel outlet, I have an old um, ear defender pushed in to the outlet. So I'm not trying to control the fuel coming out of two outlets. That just makes it a bit easier. Right, the tank's drained. Now I can put it upside down, take the valve off. Simples. That's great, I just replaced that whole thing. And the only thing I need to keep that you don't get with the kit is the two bolts, the original bolts. The paint's a little rough underneath, but uh, the rubber sealers will take care of that. Just takes a little push on to get past the uh, uh, rubber seal there. That's good now. As I say, I have repaired this valve uh, with the valve kit, but I don't, uh, it, it lasted for a while, but I don't think it's that satisfactory. All right, that's better. You can't get this in wrong, it'll only fit one way. Just takes a bit of a push to get in. Now I can put my seal back on. Cool. The longest part was draining the tank. Don't go mad over tightening these, because if you uh, knack of the threads in your tank, you're done for. So they don't, don't, they don't need a lot of force at all. That's plenty. Use a nice short lever so you don't over tighten it. That's my fuel tap changed. Lock, stock and barrel. I've had some awful starting problems with this bike and on choke when the engine's cold. It's turning over fast enough, but it wasn't starting well and the exhaust was cold. It was like you can feel it starting on two cylinders, this sort of thing. 
and I've had the carbs off so many times because I'm convinced it's the carbs. But meanwhile, I've changed everything, plugs, HT leads, coils, everything's been changed. An acquaintance, a chap called Dominic, said, check, this isn't blocked in your float. This piece here, mm, hang on. In here, there's a little jet or some something there. A little jet in there. And it's blocked on two of my four carbs. I've never even seen that bloody thing. And I've had these carbs off so many times and cleaned them and done the float height and everything like that. I'm stupid. So I'm hoping this is going to be the end of my post titan problems. That's completely blocked. So we'll get some air down there. So if I look at this one. Some carb cleaner. This circuit's blocked. Now, if I look at a good one, Geronimo. <laughs> so, good float bolt. This circuit here is not blocked, but it is on two of my other carbs. I think I found my starting problem. Thanks, Dominic. So, on the end of that plastic float mechanism, this is where the pickup for the choke is. And so it's this line that's blocked on my number two and three carbs. So uh, I need to get, and that's running all the way up here, up into where the carb plunger, the choke, sorry, the choke plunger is. So I know two of my float bowl uh, choke circuits are blocked but is the circuit on the carb blocked as well? So I've taken my plungers out of the choke circuits and I'm putting an airline down here and I hope to see something coming out of this one. Let's see. So I'm looking to see if I can get airflow out of here. There's no point in me cleaning the blockage in the float uh, bowl, uh, the float uh, chamber part of it, if this line here is blocked. So I'm just gonna put a little airline down there. I'll touch a little aerosol. Let's see. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Well. Damn. Look. Where are we? Solder's gone on that float circuit. Would you believe it? Would you believe it? Well, I found the perfect gauge wire to clear those holes. You know, these old um, little ties that you get on the, when, you, when you buy something new and it's got an electrical cable. It has a single strand filament in it. So I just took some of that plastic back and it pokes down in there very nicely. And I felt a lot of resistance, but you should be able to go right in, so, you know, a good 15 mil or so clear that jet in there work to treat so what had happened I'd had these ultrasonically cleaned by a so-called carb expert but they actually didn't dismantle the choke circuit so when I got these back the choke circuit was all stiff and these are all just full of crud and these were just covered in crud and I cleaned them as much as I can but obviously some of the crud got down through the choke circuit, back down through here, blocked up that little jet there. 
So on choke, it ended up, it wasn't starting on two cylinders. That's just because of that blocked hole there. So with all this messing on these carbs, I've had to JB weld that choke circuit there. So that's what it should look like. A copper tube there. <laughs> There's my JB welded one. I need to give that a, a, a 24 hours before I can put these back on the bike now. Right, it's two days later. So hopefully my uh, JB weld has worked. I've got my airline down here. I'm looking to see if I'm getting a clear passage out of this port here. There we are. Nice. Uh -huh. Okay, still getting a bit of a leak around the JB weld, so I've got to patch that up, another fix. I just want to see some vapour coming out of there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yep, nothing out of my fix. Cool. That's the last thing done on those carbs. So back on the bike. Good, good. 14 and a half. I had to uh, ask the forum pages because I forgot. I have all new carb seals all over this thing. And just while I'm here, I'm going through these pilots again. Just making sure they're clear, which they seem to be so far. So that's great. New pilots from Sprint. So two and a half out for these. Half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. Right, final check. Do I need to do <laughs> anything more before I put these cars back on again? No, all my rubbers are good. I'm gonna put a bit of soapy water on them to help me uh, get the car bank back on a bit easier. Um, all good. I've changed the crankcase position sensor as well. I don't think that was my problem. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not, but I've changed it uh, anyway. So, cars back on. So, some people might not do this, but I'm putting a bit of soapy water, or just a, a light film, around these rubbers, and I just find it stops the car bank sticking a bit. I'm not flooding them with water, just enough to stop them dragging. It'll evaporate anyway and just slide the carbs bodies on a bit easier. Next bit, throttle cable. I think the worst part of putting the carb back on. I hate putting these carbs back in. Right, I've just spent 20 minutes getting that throttle cable on. That's the worst part of the job, I think. Sometimes I can get on in five minutes, sometimes it takes me 20 minutes. Um, it's all adjusted now anyway. I've got free play at the uh, handle that. So I've just got to get these back in now without tearing all my rubbers off. I'll do the choke afterwards because that's easy to get to. Come on, you can do it Duffy Moon. It helps having that bit of soap. It does, it does. That's my vacuum tube. It's a breather. Can go down there for now. Breather, you can stay there for now. Fuel. 
you. Amen. Right, job done. I'm on the engine side, so this airbox will go on nicely. Hooray! <laughs> That's a nice good fit too. Good, I'll just tighten those up. Tighten the clamps up. Hopefully, this is the last time these carbs are out this thing in years. I've had them out so many times over the last 12 months or so. So let's see. One fuel tank with a nice shiny new fuel tap. check the float bars aren't leaking before I put anything else on. Right, so I have that on prime and pushed in. No leaks. Float bowls should be full up now. So I'm glad there's no leaks, so I must have done something right. So time for a battery and try and fire this up. Let's see. Choke. Neutral. Now I'm not expecting it to be a brilliant start first time. time I touch this bike I get a different problem. Now it's not firing on number four which was perfectly fine. It's absolutely crazy. I'm absolutely bamboozled. The carbs are spotless. Well that truly truly is the most disappointing rebuild I've ever done. Uh, it's not firing on three and four now. It's actually worse now than when I conked out. If I'd just changed the fuel tap, it's possible I might have been I might have been okay. Now, uh, cylinders three and four are just cold. I don't know whether they're not getting fuel. I, I don't know whether the coil's gone, but it's a brand new coil. Uh, on the ignition circuit, apart from the thing under the seats, I've replaced everything on this bike, and it's such a fucking turd. You can tell in my voice, I'm really upset. I'm really upset because I know it's going to be something silly and simple. The fact that bank three and four um, were both gone together, I should just check whether the fuel line that's routed uh, to carbs three and four isn't nicked, but I can kind of see it where I am now. You know, I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm 99.99% sure it's not but uh, maybe I'll brim this tank up and get a bit of uh, fuel pressure uh, on these lines and try again. Right, the next step, see if I can get a spark on number four. I'll lift the tank, take that spark plug uh, HT lead out, stick an old spark plug on it and see if it's sparking. Just let me know and get my spark there. I'm pretty sure I am. I'm pretty sure it's those carbs again. So I'll also try and run it with the tank lifted with the, make sure none of the fuel lines are kinked or anything like that. Right, number three and four weren't firing. What's common fuel supply to three and four? So let's just get this spark issue out of the way and see if we get a spark. Right, that's sparking perfectly well. Starting well enough on two cylinders. So I don't think I'm getting fuel to number 
three and four carbs. So maybe I've put the pipe the wrong way, but I can't see it. I can't see it myself. It looks perfectly good. We'll see. Well, good news. And it is good news. There's no fuel in the float bowl. So I suspect there's no fuel in the float bowl of number three too. And they're both supplied from the same fuel line. Now the filter in between the carbs is clear and it's a brand new fuel line. But maybe just to prime the whole line, that there's only, there's only about, I don't know, two liters of petrol in this tank. Maybe I need to get a gallon in it and kind of get this thing primed right up. Let's try that, that's encouraging. Finally got it sorted. Still on a bit of choke. So, I can get the choke to work, that's great. My right, chokes fall off. All done. Just the bodywork back now. And a test drive. Thank God for that. You might have you might have seen I was getting pretty dejected. So I wasn't getting fuel to carbs three and four. So I either kinked the line or I just didn't have enough fuel in it to get it going. To get it uh, primed through. That's great. Right, the carbs are definitely not coming off anymore now. Oh, that's very smooth. It's very smooth, I like that. So, I had two problems. Bad starting and when I was running I was conking out so the conking out part was definitely the fuel tap uh, there wasn't kink lines or anything like that or a vacuum uh, my old tap uh, wasn't working that well the new tap was working fine so that's completely cured my bad starting was all down to this choke circuit and these two blocked holes in the float bowl assembly purely those two block holes so that, oh, I've had these carbs off so many times and never even knew they were there. So uh, I'm very grateful to the person who said, uh, have you cleaned these? Because <laughs> I obviously hadn't. <laughs> uh, so problem solved and the bike is running like a dream, an absolute dream. So I'm back in love with it now. 